I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on exponential equations. In this video, we will understand the transformations. I have taken two questions here. Question number one is to describe the transformations. Each of the following are transformations of y equals to 3 to the power of x. Describe each transformation. 1a f of x equals to minus 3 to the power of 2x plus 1. 1b is g of x is 3 by 4. 3 to the power of minus x minus 1 minus 2. And c is h of x equals to 5 minus 2, 3 to the power of half x minus 1. Question 2 here is, we have to write the transformation between two different functions, of course, with the same base. State the transformations to transform f of x equals to 3 to the power of x plus 1 plus 2 to g of x, which is equal to 1 over 27 into 3 to the power of x. You can take these as your test questions, pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Now, when we describe transformations normally, we'll take a parent function. In this case, the parent function is y equals to 3 to the power of x. As you know, y equals to 3 to the power of x could be drawn as being shown here, right? So that is kind of the function we are looking at. The two critical points always to consider are these. So when we say y equals to 3 to the power of x, then when x is 0, the value of y is 1. And when x is 1, the value of y is 3. So this point here is 1, 3. The drawing is definitely not to the scale. Okay. Now before going further, we should also look into the domain and range of these functions, right? The domain and range is domain is x belongs to real numbers. And as far as the range is concerned, it is y belongs to real numbers. However, y is greater than 0. Where y equals to 0 is your horizontal asymptote, right? The function approaches the axis x-axis but never touches it. So sometimes we also add these questions that is find domain and range. I'm not including it uh, but I'm giving an idea that it could be a part of this question. Correct? Okay. Now let's begin and describe the transformations. 1a. So we have f of x equals to minus. That minus really means that the function will get reflected on the x-axis. 3 to the power of 2x. Now this 2 represents horizontal compression by a factor of half, right? And then plus 1 means it is going to be translated one unit up. So strictly speaking, if I'm sketching the graph for this particular function, how will it look like? Well, <clears throat> plus 1 means a horizontal asymptote at 1, right? So this will be, let us say, a horizontal asymptote at 1. Function is going to approach this value. Now, minus means the function gets the reflected. So instead of going upwards, it will now go downwards, right? It will now go downwards. And therefore, I could sketch this function like this. You get the idea. So that becomes your function, which is f of x equals to minus 3 to the power of 2x plus 1. Well, we have considered two things, which is y equals to 1. That is the horizontal asymptote and the minus part, right? Now, that power of 2, what will that do? Well, we learn that the value of the function at 0 will be what? Well, this will be 1, correct? Now, in this case, 
if I write anything to the power of zero, that clearly means that this first part will be one, right? So minus one plus one is zero. Therefore, you will observe that the x and y intercepts will be same in this particular case. You get the idea, right? So if that is the case, this will happen. The second part here is that if x is equal to one, in that case, we get a value which is three to the power of two, right? How? We're looking for the key point, which is one unit away. Now, that point is not one unit away. It is half the unit away. Do you see that? So for x equals to half, for x equals to half, let me write down this half, right? So I'm writing this value as half. It will be three to the power of half and half and two cancel and you get three to the power of one. So it is minus three. So this point, the point which we get here will be minus two. So these become the critical points for the given function. So that point here will be half minus two. For the given function, minus three to the power of two over x plus one. So that gives you an idea of how the function is getting transformed and how it could be sketched, right? So that's an additional information. And clearly, now in this case, what is the range? Well, the range is that the y value will be real, of course, but be now less than the horizontal asymptote 1. Less than, mainly because it is being reflected on the x-axis. So it becomes less than. Do you see that? Horizontally compressed by a factor of half, and that indicates the point which was the critical point, 1, 3, now has become half at half. That is the point, right? Now, minus 2 mainly because it's reflected. Translated 1 unit up means the horizontal asymptote, correct? And that reflects the value, which is being approached, the maximum value being approached, correct? So I hope you have related the transformed function with the original function to begin with, correct? So I thought it important to review these concepts before we go further. As you know, the answers for the rest of them are given here, right? So we'll go through the next and see what are the critical points which we should understand while moving forward with transformations, right? Okay, so I think you have understood question 1a. f of x equals to minus, minus means reflection on the x-axis. 3 to the power of 2x means horizontally compressed by a factor of half. And that gives you this factor here. And then translated one unit up is because of plus one. Now let's see, question number 1b. G of x is given to us as three over four times three to the power of minus x minus one minus two. Now in this case, this exponent of minus x minus one is very important to look at. You should factor this as shown here to get the right horizontal transformation. Otherwise, you're going to make a mistake. So now, first step should be to rewrite the function as shown here. g of x is equal to 3 over 4. 3 to the power of minus is common, right? And then x plus 1. Now, plus 1 now indicates translation towards left, right? That is clear, absolutely clear. Minus 2. This minus 2 is a vertical translation, 2 units down. Now we are ready to write down our transformations. So definitely, because the negative is there in the exponent, in the function itself, reflection is on the y-axis, vertically compressed by a factor of 3 over 4. Now 3 over 4 is less than 1, correct? 3 over 4 is less than 1. And therefore, we write this as vertically compressed by a factor of 3 over 4. Translated one unit left and two units down is absolutely clear. Now, what I'd like you to do here is sketch the function, right? So you should do sketch the function. As an added exercise. So once you sketch, you can always write the domain and range. Domain, of course, will be all real numbers, but then the range will be less than or greater than two, right? This is a positive function increasing, increasing from minus two, right? 
So it is greater than minus 2. That is another way of looking at it. Perfect. Now let's look into question C, which is h of x equals to 5 minus 2 times 3 within brackets to the power of half x minus 1. So what should you do? Now it's very important to rearrange and write, right? So rearrange the equation. So when you don't see an equation the way you should be seeing it normally, you should rearrange so that you get it in the standard form. Perfect. And then you start writing the transformations. So you see the number 5. Now, when you write it at the correct position, you clearly understand that this is the vertical translation by 5 units up, right? And now, let's start from left to right to describe the transformation and then describe from left to right. Now, this is very important since that is the order of transformation. Do you see that? It is performed. Now, many times it is included in the question that write the transformation in the correct order. Now, even if it is not written, you should write in correct order. Do you understand? So therefore, I purposely missed this part, but you have to write the transformation in perfect order. That means multiplications first and then addition and subtraction. Stretches, compressions, and reflections first, and then translation. That is what it means. So that's what we have been doing here. So now from here, clearly, we have h of x as minus 2, 3 to the power of half, x minus 2. So do you see that part? So we factored half out. So when you factor half, then you get x minus 2. You're very clear that it is 2 units to the right. That is the translation. Otherwise, you could make a mistake in this particular case. Right? So these are potential errors. You have to really look for them. Okay. Don't make these errors. Okay. So let's write down the transformations now. First part is we have a reflection on the x-axis because of this minus and then vertically compressed not compressed but stretched right so it is not compressed it is stretched by a factor of two right because it's greater than one horizontally stretched by a factor of two correct that is also correct and then translate two units right and five units Right. That is how we'll complete the transformation of this particular function. Perfect. Now let's move on to the second type of question, which is very popular in this topic, where we are not basically using a parent function, but we have transformation from one function to the other. Correct. So let's go through this question now, which says, state the transformations to transform f of x which is 3 to the power of x plus 1 plus 2, to g of x, which is 1 over 27, 3 to the power of x. Now, strategy to do this type of question is, you write both the functions and see, how can you change, how can you come from here to there, right? So that is the transformation you're looking at. So easy part is definitely vertical, translations right so which is you know here to get to this point you have to do minus two right so that becomes plus zero here correct so that takes care of translation so going from f of x to g of x uh, easy things i'm writing i'll write them in proper order later so that is the that is the last part which i have mentioned here translate two units down so we get first thing absolutely correct but this should be given at the end since in transformations, order of transformation is important, right? So normally, order of transformation is maintained when you describe from left to right. But what we mean here is we have to write reflections, stretches, 
and compression first followed by translation that is the order of transformation okay so we wrote it at the end now second when we look at the top part it really reflects horizontal translation now when we say x plus one means this function was one unit to the left but now it is three to the power of x means you move from left to right one unit correct so that means at this stage you move right by one unit right so that gives you the translation one unit right you get the idea the last one here is the vertical stretch factor so what you notice is you have a vertical stretch factor this is one in previous case one over 27 so that means we have been compressing this by a factor of one over 27 so that is how you could describe them in order you can say it is vertically compressed by a factor of 1 over 27, translated 1 unit right, and translated 2 units down. That is how we are going to explain. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. So with that, we come to an end of this exercise. While describing the transformations, we also touched upon the parent function, which is 3 to the power of x. It is a good idea to know the parent function before describing the transformations. Understand the key points, right? And then describe. Also, remember, you could have been asked for domain and range. You could also be asked to sketch the function to show the transformation. You get the idea. So you could also be asked this question, which is sketch transform function to show all transformations. Correct. So this could also be a part of your question. So in this case, when you're describing vertical stretch and compressions and then translations, you need to sketch them in order, to show all the steps using a sketch. So those are additional parts which you should add to this particular question and get ready for your test. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.